everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Soldiers Angels podcast, Tribute to Our Heroes. My name is Adrian Martinez, and today I am joined by an Army veteran who works out of our Orlando, Florida office. He's a man whose unwavering devotion to this country, family, and America's veterans and military knows no limits. He always leaves a positive impact wherever he goes, and I'm happy to have him on this episode to share his story. Please welcome Army veteran, veteran intern at Soldiers Angels, Nelson Garcia. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. How are you doing today, Nelson? I'm doing well in yourself. Doing well, brother. Thanks for asking. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to meet with me here today. I know you're very busy organizing food distributions and luncheons and all that stuff out there in Orlando. So thank you for that. And most importantly, thank you for your service as well. Thank you and you as well. Thank you. So I know that uh, from what I remember the last time we spoke, the story of how you ended up with us at Soldiers Angels is, and from where you, uh, from when you first served, it was a long, windy road story with a lot of unpredictable turns and events that you didn't really know how it was all going to turn out. But at the end, it all kind of worked out pretty well. Am I correct in saying that? Correct. All right. Cool. You know, I think uh, those kind of stories are always the best, in my opinion, because it always just shows, like, you know, following your gut instinct and just persevering and eventually things kind of play out in a very good way. So I'm glad to to know that you have that story and you're going to be able to share it with us. So um, like every good story, let's just start it off from the very beginning. Go ahead and let me know right now, let everybody know where you're currently at and where you originally grew up. Well, right now I'm in the Orlando area. There's a suburb or a little division city called Orange City, which is about an hour away from the uh, downtown area. And originally I'm from Alexandria, Virginia, which is known as the uh, DMV, the DC area. Mm -hmm. So we're right out of DC, like 15 minutes away. And Alexandria is pretty much, is a large city and that's due to, because of DC is in the proximity. So, I mean, it's real busy. And I mean, you, it definitely keeps you on your toes. Oh yeah. No, I've heard stuff about Virginia and D.C. area. I know there's a lot of craziness and really fast paced sometimes, but yeah, oh, yeah, I'll have to check it out one day. Yeah. All right, it's good to hear. And so you grew up around, you grew up in Virginia. Um, I guess what ended up leading to you deciding to serve? I think the majority of it was probably because I was a rebel. I was mm. a bad kid in uh, high school. <laughs> and I think one of those times that I just felt like, you know what? I just want to get away from the house. I just want to go do my own thing. And then, you know, I got connected with a recruiter. He sold me on adventure, uh, camping. Do I like to go out and see the world? And next thing you know, I'm in the infantry. <laughs> and from there, you know, when I presented it to my parents, you know, they were like, what? Why did you sign up? And, you know, but I was like, you know what? I want to do this. This is something I don't want to, you know, stay in Virginia all my life, and I just want to go out and do something different. So mm -hmm. that was that was the meaning behind that. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. I know a lot of uh, a lot of people join. I mean, they, a lot of people do want to just serve the country, but it's also an escape from whatever like our surroundings there are. Some people do want to go out and see different things, and I know personally that's that's what it was like for me when I joined the Navy. I just wanted to get out of my hometown, see something different, yeah. experience yeah. different things. So. Yeah, and then of course they the recruiters they get you with those uh, camping or whatever. They told me, "Do you want to see the world?" I'm like, "Well, yeah, well, like, well join the navy." And that's how they got me. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely relate to that. Uh, real quick before we proceed on, um, when you joined the military, what was uh, I guess your MOS and how far did you go in rank? Uh, my MOS was 11 Bravo, which is uh, the grunt infantry, mm. and I started off boot camp was at Fort Benning, Georgia, mm. and then from there I my first duty station was Schofield Barracks, Hawaii. Gotcha. And then my last year, I did four years. So the last year I went to Fort Hood, uh, Texas, and I made it all the way to corporal. Had I stayed in, I probably would have hit my sergeant stripes in three months because mm. I had completed the board at the time too. Oh, okay. Nice, nice. That's pretty cool. So yeah, um, I guess, you know, looking back at your time, within the uh, army, everything you experienced, you know, 
what were some of like uh i guess some of the more memorable experiences that are like good or that you look back back on fondly that you remember every time that i think about the army and my service i mean the best times were being there with my brothers you know having that camaraderie that loyalty that trust you knew that you know somebody had your back and i mean there's a lot of members especially hawaii i mean mm -hmm. hawaii was a unit it's an infantry unit light infantry so everywhere we went we walked there was no such thing as uh jumping on a truck and taking a ride into the field you know we we marched if it wasn't marching we repelled out of helicopters so it was fun and you know i just wish that it, it just would have been longer for me awesome yeah no i know uh serving in the military you know it's different for everybody people right. have really awesome experience and people have a harder one you know, but the one thing I will say is that you come out of it with a lot of life experience in one way or another. You know, right. you will have grown as a person and inevitably it will make you grow for sure. So, you know, I never see it as a bad thing, regardless of all the difficult stuff, too. So, you know, it's bad to hear. Um, let's see. And so uh, from what years did you, end up, uh, did you serve to? From 91 to 1995. Okay. And uh, as far as, uh, you know, you go in, you're a rebel kid. You want to see, experience different things. You want to get out of your hometown. You go in, you meet brothers, you kind of grow as a person. And so 95 hits, um, I guess, tell us about your experience as far as like transitioning out, getting out of the military and what you've done, I guess, since then. Yeah, when I got out in 95, which was October, for me, it was tough because I was so used to the army life, military life. And like you said, it's not for everybody, but for me, I just fit in, uh, you know, in so well that, mm -hmm. you know, once you learn how to play the game, so to speak, you know, I learned it. And, you know, I, to me, I felt that I had it made because I had so many mentors, sergeants, officers that were willing to, you know, coach me, mentor, Mm -hmm. and help me develop and also, you know, tell me what courses to take to help me with, you know, college credits when I got out. But um, for me, it was difficult because I didn't know how to detach from that service. So it was like coming out to the real world or the civilian world, so to speak. And in my mind, I was like, okay, I was a team leader. So mm -hmm. that should give me like a supervisor or an assistant manager job. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, I led, once I got into the, uh, they tasked me to work at the uh, S1 office, which is kind of like the admin office, which they process, you know, like your uh, military files and your orders, you know, you conduct uh, sergeant promotion boards and things like that. So that made me feel like, I could do something more like in an operations management role. Mm -hmm. But when I came out at that time, I don't know if it was just a struggle or if it was, you know, whatever was going on, it was just tough because, you know, the jobs that I wanted required more experience and more education. Mm -hmm. And the only jobs that were being offered weren't the jobs that I wanted. Yeah. No, I definitely, uh, I can definitely relate to that. You know, a lot of the stuff you, you do learn a lot of, I guess, like team building, team leading right. skills. And I mean, all that stuff is really important, but sometimes it is hard to, I guess, transition it to a civilian sector, especially just different companies. They don't really see it the same way, even though you're more than capable, even if you don't know, you know, you can learn it because right. I mean, being in the service, it's all about learning on the job. So it's like, you put me in there, I'm going to figure it out. But you know, it, it can be tough for sure. I know I, I dealt with that too. And I know a lot of veterans that I've spoken with have also had that exact same struggle. A lot of my shipmates in the Navy have told me about like, you know, I thought I'd be able to just go and get an electrician job because they were an electrician on the ship. I'm like, it just seems like it makes sense. But I mean, sometimes it doesn't. It's a lot of different, exactly. different hoops to jump through. That's for sure. Yeah. So, you know, so, all right. So you eventually get out, you know, you're, you're struggling to find a job. Uh, I guess more or less, uh, how did you end up, I guess, getting in touch with Soldiers Angels. What was your first exposure to the organization? Well, at that time, you know, the pandemic hit mm -hmm. and 
my dad had a stroke at the time. Mm. So I wasn't working. So it was easier for me to make that decision to come to Florida and be his caretaker. Mm. So because I was unemployed at the time, I was also searching, you know, through the VA and through other government or federal assistance to try to get, you know, some type of, um, whether the assistance was monetary food, you know, anything that, you know, could help mm -hmm. me. And at the same time, help the situation I was in with, you know, with my mom and helping care for my dad. So from there, I was connected with a social worker at the VA. And then she told me, she gave me like a list of all these organizations and all these resources that I could reach out to. And so I reached out to uh, Soldiers Angels because they were like one of the main ones there on the list. Mm. And, you know, and she really, you know, explained to me like, hey, they'll give you food if you need food, whether it's just for one month, two months, you know, up to you. They're, they're there to help you out. So I uh, filled out the form and went through that process, went to my first uh, food distribution. And there I met uh, Sophia. Mm -hmm. who was volunteering at the time and she had also gone through the same situation of looking, you know, for um, assistance. And from there, we just connected. And, you know, she told me, hey, have you ever thought about volunteering? And I said, you know what? I like how this is, you know, this operation. I like the vibe, energy. And, you know, there's something that I want to do. And I've always wanted to give back to my uh, fellow brothers and sisters, you know, in the military. Nice. So it all just kind of ended up lining up. So you ended exactly. up going there to receive help and realizing how good the help was. And then you decided, I, I want to be helping, too. That's awesome. You know? Yes. You know, a lot of the times here in Soldiers Angels, you know, we always talk about, like, we're still serving even after serving. And um, do you think as a veteran and as the, also working here as Soldiers Angels, we do continue that tradition of continuing to serve even after we've served? No, that's pretty uh, accurate because, mm -hmm. you know, and, I, you know, I, I can say this and you can relate to this, you know, being in a job or career of serving, no matter where that chapter or that journey ends, or maybe you close that door on one chapter, but you're always serving in some form. Mm -hmm. So whether it's, you know, you're serving your parents, whether you're serving your sisters, your siblings, whether you know you're serving your friends in some aspect, I mean, it, it continues. Even if you close the door on it career wise, you're going to do it in your personal life in some aspect. So I think it never ends unless you want it to end. But if it's in you, you know, if, if it's part of your life or if it's in your DNA, you're always going to continue serving. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. You know, and that's. You know, personally, I think that's one thing I really love about working here at Soldiers Angels is that that kind of passion that you just talked about, wanting to serve people that want to continue to serve other people, especially our veterans and our military. You know, I think we all kind of intrinsically have it inside of us. So it's really an organization I feel built off of that passion. And right. I mean, you see it from the very top, from Amy, all the way down to people like me and you and everybody else, all the volunteers as well. So I think it's awesome that, you know, it can bring veterans like that together across the country as well. So no, definitely not. I'm not just saying that because I work here. It's the truth. <laughs> it's yeah. really the truth. Um, and as far as like, uh, so I know you, you know, you start to volunteer with us, you know, sometimes progress. So um, I guess let's move on to a little bit more recently. Um, what do you currently do within Soldiers Angels right now? I am uh, with the internship program that Soldiers mm -hmm. Angels does. Nice. And currently I'm, slash the intern and slash site coordinator mm -hmm. and it's doing a lot of numerous things out there in the community and in the sites at the VA. Nice. Okay. You liking it so far? Oh, I love it. That's awesome. I love it. Sometimes it's hard to turn off that, uh, <laughs> that, that work clock. Oh yeah. yeah. I definitely know what you mean, man. <laughs> well, that's good though. That's good. I'm glad to hear you like it. Um, and I know, uh, you know, you, you came from, you know, receiving and then needing assistance with groceries and food, which when you signed up for the VFD, exposing you to us, and now you're working with us. And I know even still to this day, more recently, you're still receiving some help with things that you need. I, I know recently you came 
uh, you were part of the program where we donate vehicles to um, veterans and you were nominated. So can you tell us a little bit more about that experience and from the beginning to end, how it all, how it all shaped out? Yes, that, I mean, I'm still in shock. I mean, that is a, such an overwhelming experience. You know, I am very fortunate. Again, you know, I, I don't know if I have a guardian angel or I have that luck or, you know, blessings that, you know, I've always been involved with someone that mentors me or developed me. You know, I, I'm just me. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. I'm just me and I don't expect anything. I don't, any anything that I do with any role or career that I pick. I don't go into it trying to be number one in the company or expecting things in return. You know, I just do them. So mm -hmm. with the nomination of the car, it was something that, you know, I at the time didn't have transportation, you know, again, going back to the pandemic, you know, when a lot of people were, got laid off at that time, it was the best decision just to turn in the car that I was leasing. Mm. It didn't make sense to hold on to, you know, as much as you worked hard for it and you got it. Yeah. Why hold on to it and put yourself more yeah. in a financial burden, you know? So it hurt to part ways with it, but mm. I was like, you know what? I did it once and I can do it again. You know, I'll, I'll end up getting that car and something better, you know, doesn't have to, you know, be the end of that. Mm -hmm. But, um you know life went on and so you know once i started volunteering you know i didn't care about the distance and i was like nope you know if i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this and it doesn't matter if i can make it mm -hmm. to where i gotta be whether it's public transportation or about borrowing my mother's car mm -hmm. i'm gonna make it happen and you know that was my mentality so while all of this is going on you know there's we're like random questions you know certain you know hey we're trying to create this profile for you so little things that you know kind of you know we're like suspect that you know hey why are they asking <laughs> why are they asking for this information but you know i was like hey times have changed you know mm -hmm. they probably need this for you know all programs are different so i didn't pay no mind to it so last month i believe it was last month last month you know uh manny sent me a uh, message and said, hey, we need to meet. We're going to have a full-blown meeting with all the volunteers at Lake Baldwin. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, it was kind of one of those things where it's like, you know, we've never had a meeting of this magnitude, but oh, well, <laughs> some, something's going on. <laughs> so we, we get there and then, you know, he's giving his speech and he's going on about, you know, the program and then what the recycle cars is and, you know, but it's not clicking until he says, we're here to recognize uh, one of our volunteers that has been traveling. Once he said that, mm -hmm. then it's like, oh man. No. Wait a minute, they're talking about me? <laughs> yeah, they're talking about me. And at the same time, I'm like, no, 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 no. You know, I, in my mind, I was like, I can't accept this gift. Mm -hmm. I really can't accept it, you know, because there's other veterans out there far more deserving that than me or have other situate missing limbs or you know going mm -hmm. through other things you know my minds is such small mm -hmm. compared to theirs so you know i was already as he's talking I'm, my mind is already like no 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 you can't accept it you can't mm -hmm. you know but at that time everything just came out there and you know next thing you know they're putting this key in my hands and i'm just <laughs> like to smile you know, be grateful, you know, yeah. you appreciate it, you know, and everything. Just like, okay, we'll think this, we'll think this through after yeah. all of this is over and done with. And, you know, they, they didn't was, give you a chance to say no. no. Huh? <laughs> no <laughs> You're taking this part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. Now, that was a really awesome moment. Uh, you know, anytime when we give um, the vehicles away for our veteran car donations to a, a veteran, it's always uh, such an awesome, heartfelt moment because, you know, you, you feel the, uh, the appreciation but also like the hesitancy like are you sure i can do this and of course like yeah. yes of course we're sure like we're doing this for you yeah. so you know it's always nice to see it 
And a quick plug, if you guys want to see that video, we actually did post it on our social. You can see Nelson there trying to maneuver his way through the whole thing, but it's a great right. video overall together. Um, I definitely recommend you guys check it out. Um, but yeah, no, so now you got the car and um, I mean, how is it? Uh, is it good? You like it? Oh yeah, I mean, the car, I mean, it's far than what I expected. You know, like I said, I mean, it, it's the way that they, re the best way that I can describe it is kind of like when they take those cars in MTV mm. and they pimp them out and they oh, restore them, <laughs> except, that, except that they didn't go that extreme, but I yeah. mean, they, you know, they touched up everything, you know, from what the uh, gentleman at the Daytona Toyota Collision Center and dealership told me. I mean, they refurbished it. I mean, it comes in with low mileage. It has like minimal things. I mean, they inside out vacuum, shampoo the carpets, dance, repaint it, bright, you know, from inside out. And I mean, it, and, and when they unveiled it, I'm like, wow, like. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it literally looked like a brand new car. Yeah. No, I saw the pictures. It, it did look nice. I'm glad that, you know, it's good that it wasn't just some old rinky-dink car. You know, it's a hey, nice been I would have been happy with a uh, Honda 84, 88. Oh, yeah. You know, hey, been <laughs> you, know you would have been, but, you know, I'm glad we were able to get yeah. somebody donated it. And it was a good vehicle. Yeah. Refurbished and get it top as best as we can when we, before we give them out. So that's, I'm glad to hear, Nelson. I'm glad it's doing good for you. And, and you know. It seems like it all worked out pretty well. That's good to hear. Um, let's see. And as far as like moving forward, you know, I mean, what do you what do you see yourself doing? Uh, you know, moving forward as a veteran, hearing here at Soldiers Angels, do you have any goals or anything like that? That's a great question because I was thinking about this the other day of where will this journey and path take me? And I'm gonna be very open minded. I'm gonna let you know, if you believe in a higher power or spirituality, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just going to let, you know, as we all say, you know, let God take the wheel and wherever he wants to place me, that's where I'm going to go with, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, with Soldiers Angels, whether it's, you know, with the VA. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's where it seems that my path or I feel that the path is going to, you know, take me mm -hmm. um, in both places. I know that I could excel and, you know, grow and contribute uh so pretty much the door is open on that you know i'm not you know gonna say i'm gonna do one thing here mm -hmm. and, you know from experience every time i've said i'm gonna do one thing here i always change my mind and do the opposite so <laughs> this time i'm just gonna let where, wherever the path goes that's where i'm going let go let god right <laughs> yeah, exactly. no, i hear you there brother it's good to hear all right and um just to finish up the questions here um, what does it mean to you to be a veteran? To me, aside from, you know, service and sacrifice to your country, for me, it means, you know, the camaraderie, like I said, the loyalty. I mean, it's a life that only few can experience. Mm -hmm. Only a few can, you know, have that honor prestige to say you know hey i served and i met folks from all walks of life i got to do different type of jobs i had to you know got the opportunity to fire weapons mm -hmm. fire missiles i got to see things burn explode you know so many things but i mean for me i you know i, I can't find the words to describe it except that you know when I think about being a veteran, automatically, you know, service, sacrifice, and country come to mind. Amen, brother. I hear you there, man. Good, good. Um, let's see. And then, lastly, as far as um, if you have any words of wisdom that you'd maybe want to give to the next generation of service members or veterans, what would those be? My words of wisdoms would be about timing and passion. Timing, don't rush it. You know, when it's your time, it will be there and when and you'll know when and just make sure you excel in that moment. And then anything you do in life, make sure you're passionate about it. Don't do it just because it's to fill a void or it's to, you know, feel monetary. You know, money is good. But, you know, if you're not happy doing it, 
then all the money in the world is not going to matter because you're going to end up doing something that you don't like. Absolutely. All right. Mr. Nelson, thank you so much for your time. Thank you again for your service and for continuing to serve the veteran and military community through us. We really do appreciate everything you do for the organization. I know I can speak about countless veterans that probably appreciate what you do for them as well. So thank you for meeting with us. It was a great pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Not a problem. And if you'd like to join us as a volunteer or if you'd like to register for support, please visit us at soldiersangels.org. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube for any updates or events that we have going on within the organization. Thanks again for tuning in. And until next time, may no soldier go unloved. Thank you. Thank you.